Hi guys, it's Virtus here. In this video, I'm basically going to try and persuade you not to use Z-Spheres anymore. It's going to be a workflow that's holding you back. It's very linear, destructive and restrictive. I'm going to be offering different alternatives that have better consequences and a much smoother workflow, especially in the system when you're working in the games industry has better iterative development. Also, better ways of creating the interaction of body elements. So, for example, the rib cage and the torso and how they work together. So with Z-Spheres, it's really evident when an artist has used them and you see a lot of things that kind of look the same. Problem with this is you start from a basis that is very globular. When you come to more advanced things, Z-Spheres starts to become a bit more restrictive and destructive. For example, here, you know, the artist started with the best intentions of using Z-Spheres and what they came out with is far divorced from what they started with. And that's a really bad sign when it comes to the workflow. You'll know that a lot of time has been wasted. Where Z-Spheres really does have its places when it comes to rigging a character. So say, for example, I need to reposition a character from a, a T pose to an A pose, or maybe create a structure for a screenshot. That's where Z spheres are very useful. It's almost like a very powerful rigging tool. So there'll be other videos for that that I'll make. So make sure you subscribe so you can see those. But for this video, it's mainly going to be uh, blasting on Z spheres. Uh, but I do it from the goodness of my heart because I want you to improve your workflows and be a much better artist. Uh, and from the aspect from an art director, when I'm working with artists, I find it really disappointing when they are using Z-Spheres because it's hard to iterate on things and we can't make changes that easily. So I'm going to try and describe those in this video. So if at any point you don't agree with me, I'd love to hear from you. I'm always trying to improve and find the best workflows, especially when it comes to the conversion of time to making good art. So honestly, I'd really like to hear if there's any improvements that we can make to this. So non-ironically, we're off to a good start. My ZBrush crashed from using Z-Spheres. Basically, I had made a structure and then gone back in the timeline and lost everything. <laughs> so those who don't know Z-Spheres can be found in the tools. You can just right click or click on one of these tools and change it to Z-Spheres. So one of the things that I think is restrictive and a waste of time with Z-Spheres is the shape limitations that you've got. So say, for example, we want to make a torso. The only options that we have with Z-Sphere is to create the Z-Spheres themselves and reposition it. So, you know, you can come in here and start to rescale some of these spheres. But the problem is it just has a generic cone shape and that's not what a human torso is made of. So for example, the body is made of all these intricate shapes that have unique ways of interacting with each other. So a better methodology would basically make those shapes and move them around in ZBrush so you can choose and pick those interactions. Now you could come in here and try and replicate that system, but what you end up doing is basically drawing additional spheres um, and basically you're fighting against the tool to try and make muscles instead of making form and function. So what some Zsphere advocates might say is that they basically use this as a structure or a starting point and they'll use the adaptive skin and work from there. The problem with that is at this point, it's a bit too late. So for example, if you want to come in here and change the shape of the torso, you're actually going to adjust all the rest of the body. And that can get super difficult after a while. So say, for example, I want to insert a rib cage here. You know, it's it's kind of working out, but the rest of the sculpt and the spheres are interfering with what I had. Um, it'd be nicer if this was basically broken down. We take a head, for example, you would assume that Z-spheres are really good at making that because fundamentally, it's basically just a sphere with a tube that's attached to it. But to make a convincing head, basically what we have to do is increase this and then insert more spheres down the line to obtain that basic tube shape. And even then you get this weird kind of lamp post look. And then from there you have to recreate the head. So at that point it even causes more issues. So say for example, we've got the anatomy of the head, the neck, um, the rig that's going on here. This isn't how the body moves. It's not how the, the neck is connected to the spine. So what you have is you'll be inserting a lot of spheres and it won't be very accurate. So you're just going to have to position this with your understanding of character mechanics. So a far superior way of making a torso instead of using Z spheres is to break it down into major shapes. And I cover this fully in one of the YouTube videos on the channel and I'll link that down. With this method you would start with a sphere and you would make the components or the basic shapes and this gives you a better understanding of the mechanics of the creature or the character that you're making. So for example we can make a rib cage and then start to attach shapes from that instead of doing it the counter opposite way where you'd make a sphere and then try and adjust it to the skin surface shape of a character. So from here you can do the anatomy checks and make sure that that shape is correct and once you've got that foundation basically everything's going to build on 
top of that. You can then use a brush like an IMM Primitive. And if we select different shape like a capsule, you can fit this shape to interact with your previous anatomy. So for example, we have the nice interaction between the rib cage and the torso. So just like Z spheres, we have access to polygroups. So say with a character we want to increase the size of the rib cage, we can just use the gizmo to do that. Whereas with Z spheres, we'd have to come in, select each one of these and use the scale option. The problem with that is it's going to affect the rest of the chain down the line. And it also might potentially move some of these pivot points. So it's a very destructive way of doing things. Also, when you're moving sections of the anatomy, it's more mechanically correct. So you can hold Alt and move this pivot point. Basically, we can change this character. Maybe it's doing a crunch or it's a, a curved over large character like that. So this will translate better to the mechanics of the character. So when you're moving something like the spine, it's changing the interactions of all the shapes. So the skin passing over the rib cage and back to the torso. With the IMM method, we can simply just come in, select the capsule for the main neck, position that in a way where it's mechanically correct. We can also scale it and reshape it. So there's all these options that aren't offered with the Z spheres. For the main head, it's also simple enough. It's just a case of adding a sphere. And again, with this sphere, we can make some informed decisions, how the head is connecting to the neck, just getting the move tool, basically shaping the initial head. And it's really good for a block out. So what's happening here is a lot of the work is already being done. So say for example, how the neck is blending into the head. I can make those decisions right now instead of sculpting it later on something on a surface that is quite confusing. We'd have to make a lot of edits to simulate anything that's near to this. So some people might say that you lose the functionality of this, this nice rig system. So for example, repositioning the posture of the character. And you know, even though it's mechanically not correct, it's, it's kind of cool that you can move these back and forth. But the thing is, you can do that with the IMM system. And in fact, you can do it to a much uh, more accurate degree. And all we have to do is get this sub tool here and click group split. And once we hit group split, the creation we made is basically split into all the individual shapes. And then from this point, we can select and group things together. So I can select the head, hold control and up, alt click the neck and also press control and up. That's basically going to stack these together. From here, I can go new folder, call it something like head and neck, and then just drag both of those sub tools into the head and neck folder. So with this folder, what you can do is hit this cog and then goes transpose set. Now what we can do is we've almost got a superior rigging system where we can adjust the pivot point of that folder to change the sort of direction of the head and the neck. But further to that, we can come into the individual sub tool, for example, the head and the cranium, hold alt to move the pivot point, and then we can position that in the correct location for better adjustments. So what we've basically done is creating quite an advanced rig through the folder system where we can rotate the head independently, but also at the same time with transpose set, we can adjust um, the neck and the head together. And you know, it even gets better than that. For example, if you don't like the silhouettes that are happening, we can just select the head and then go to merge and then merge down. It's going to put the neck and the head into the same sub tool. And then we can just use the move tool to move these together. And we can make global decisions and changes to the silhouette. And even while you're in this mode, because they are floating objects, they're of the same sub tool, but they're floating objects. You can use something called move topological. And that's the brush found up here. Basically the first one that you click and drag, it's only going to move that independent sub tool. So what we've done is create this hierarchy of cool features where we can change the anatomy, change the structure. We can combine them together, move them independently. So there's loads and loads of options um, compared to the Z spheres where we basically get given this kind of light bulb head, a very basic rudimentary rig where we are restricted on how it can move. It can only move back and forth. It doesn't really give us the silhouette we can do. So there's, there's hardly any options for it. So before I move on to the next point of trying to eradicate Z spheres from your workflow, if you're appreciating the video so far and you can see the benefits of this workflow in comparison to Z spheres, please leave a like and also subscribe because there'll be lots of more videos where I break down sort of like inefficiencies that are happening with character artists and things that I find very useful. So the next point is more to do with the efficiency of you as a professional. So for example, when you're using these systems, this skill is more transferable onto other things like hard surface, or say for example, you're making a, a quite a complicated ear, we could still use this system. Whereas Z-Spheres, there's not too much to be transferred over. If you were gonna create an ear out of Z-Spheres, you can imagine how hard that would be. And you know, let's let's just start it for fun. To be honest, I wouldn't even know how to start because you just get given these massive spheres. I guess you would sort of move this around and try and create a helix maybe. Um, or what you would do is just create a really big surface that you assume that you're going to come in later and start to sculpt on. Um, so again, we're just hitting so many restrictions with this. I guess what you could do is kind of create these sorts of shapes and then have multiple 
Z spheres. The issue with this is Z spheres is actually really bad at making curvature. So for example, if you wanted a nice smooth line, you'd actually have to come in and create all these individual points to create that nice curved structure. And then that's basically leading to another annoying point is that you're trying to get more structure, but what you're doing is introducing more spheres and more spheres means more complexity and more chances for artifacts to happen. So for example, if you move some spheres that are too close together, when you're trying to create a complicated shape, you'll often get these errors that pop up and they'd be really restrictive. So with the IMM workflow, already we can come and position the ear directly. We know precisely where it is because we've already created this mechanical structure. Now, if you imagine Z spheres, we just have a massive sphere. We'd sort of have to guess where that's going to be. For this, we know that position is good. Further to that, with the move tool, we can now reshape this ear and make sure that the proportions are good and also make sure that it's seated inside of the head. So this is saving us a lot of time. So here I've just made a very basic ear shape. I wouldn't usually do this for the ear, but it just goes to show as an example the powers of the IMM brush compared to Z spheres. So we could use something like a sphere and just insert this. And then from here, all the options are available for you to make all the complexities of the ear, like all the e helixes and the inside cartilage. So you can really go as deep as you like and make all forms of structure. And as you can see, compared to the Z spheres, we can actually make nice curvature. And again, the body is about forms that interact with each other. So we're inserting those. So imagine if we were progressing with the ear, we have all these little individual features that we can move together and with the move topological we can come in and start to adjust the individual forms so it's really super powerful and remember we still have this in a folder so with the head and neck we can come into the cog go transpose set and basically alt click around roughly where you think the pivot point is going to be so another thing with z spheres is it's a really destructive workflow so i'll show that mechanically with the tools how i use it but also in my role as an art director how annoying it can be if an artist does use z spheres and some of the problems that that can cause when we're trying to iterate on characters some of the other pieces will move together and that's basically because your brush size so to go against that you have to reduce the size of your brush and then that means you can pinpoint certain locations so for example i've left the head like this and that's only because i've had trouble actually selecting the underside of the neck here what i have to do is come down make the draw size really small so i can actually just attach this and even to that extent i'm having trouble actually grabbing it so then i can start to move this away the only way to really mix fix it is just basically push that off bring this down and then put it down again so you can see how it's a really destructive workflow or someone i'm teaching at university it's caused issues with students and they don't know what's going on and it's usually because they rotate one of these spheres in a weird unique way so usually what happens is they'll come through with the rotation and you can actually rotate these orbs without really knowing it. So when I've got rotations here as I'm going up and down, it's actually twisting this orb around. And then when you come to preview, what you'll find is that geometry is starting to twist. And you'll often see this on forums. Lots of people have the same sort of issues when you're first learning how to use Z spheres or Z spheres. And thirdly, Z spheres will just outright stop you from doing certain processes. So say, for example, I want to put the bicep and tuck that underneath the deltoid. Um, it's actually stopping me because it's interfering with another part of the Z spheres. And it's only gets worse as you start to develop. So now to the workflow or the industry workflow issues that it causes. So as I've been working as an art director, I work with multiple character artists and often we'll find that at each iteration of stage, we'll start to review that character and just make sure it matches up with the other things in the game. Or maybe we send it over to a rigger, animator or a programmer designer. Now, if something comes back and one of these proportions have to change, or maybe the mechanics has to change slightly, this is going to be really easy at this stage with the IMM brushes that we've used. So say, for example, we need to resize the ear. We can do that quite simply or reposition the structure of the head or the neck and how it connects to the back of the cranium. Now with Z spheres, if I come and say, right, I want the head to be larger or, or, or smaller, there's no real interpretation of what that looks like. And also it's going to be very difficult. So if I come in here and scale it, that's not really reading as a head. Now, if I make that addition or that change and then send it to a director or try and communicate that to someone else in the team, um, it's not representative of what they're trying to look for. So in terms of using Z spheres versus IMMs, IMMs is always going to win in terms of communicating ideas and iterating on characters. So if I haven't already destroyed Z spheres view, I'm going to continue doing it. So also at the same time in comparison, it's very restrictive. So it limits you to the amount of things that you can do artistically. So as we're going through in sculpting, some 
sometimes it's quite convenient to input landmark information uh, and landmark information you can't put in any of the Z spheres. We can't use any of the standard tools to create those, those sort of like divots and features. One of the main examples is when it comes to the eyes, obviously it's very useful at a certain point to insert some eyes. We don't even have to dynamesh this. We could just use something like uh, Sculptress Pro and start to insert information that reads very well and communicates very well. We also have the ability to poly paint. So say, for example, we need to send this off to someone, put some landmarks in. That's very easy to do. Whereas with Z spheres, there's no options for that. You can just basically change the entire color itself. So what you might say is Virtus, I can use different methodologies for different sections of the body and then combine those together. I've heard that a lot from students as well. The problem with that is Z-Spheres is so separated from everything that is to do with sculpting. So once you create something like a Z-Sphere, you have to come into the skin and then click preview. And that's only a preview. So to actually start to work with that model and attach it to other sections of your character, you have to come into make adaptive skin. And once you make adaptive skin, it creates a new sub tool. So that's already really annoying. And then you have to append that back into your main character and even from that point it's a very linear workflow so once you've made that move you then lose the options for all the benefits that you had with the z spheres so you can't move this you're just left with a generic sculpt that you now have to remanage and work for yourself and basically to add to that uh, restrictive and linear workflow once you are done with the mesh you basically get given this squared unit that needs a lot of smoothing so you have to actually come in here and repair a lot of it um, now there's a couple of ways around it you could try and increase the density or maybe the, reduce the dynamesh resolution so you don't have to have much smoothing but then again you're making sacrifices of losing form um, and look at this silhouette you know it's just something that you can't really work with so if you want to practice that imm workflow really powerful tool i suggest moving on to the video on forming a base mesh where i go through setting up a references and creating things like rib cages and limbs from there also down in the description is our 3D Mutiny Discord page where people are introducing themselves, showing off uh, some pretty cool artworks and getting some feedback. Also down in the description is a link to a free welcome package. So make sure you receive that. I'll also be sending out private videos that I wouldn't usually on YouTube. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.